hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm so excited to be doing this all matte look no cut crease today as requested from a lot of you guys so let's get into this tutorial all right so we're starting off with beautiful brown skin of course, I'm going to start off with her eyebrows because I always start off with brows. And I'm using the Absolute New York Pencil in the shade Smoke. And I'm going to shape out her brows. She already has a really beautiful um, natural shape to her brow. So I'm just going to copy that same shape. So when you're using this pencil, you want to make sure that you're using a fairly light hand because this is like a blackish brown pencil. It, it's kind of like a really close to black, so it's already dark. So you just want to make sure you aren't applying too much pressure when using because you don't want the brows to come out too, too dark. So now I'm just working on getting the brows even. I did say that I was going to stop um, doing brows on camera because I feel like I tend to mess up when I'm recording. So now I'm going in with my Morphe M224 brush and I'm taking Max Concealer in NC50 and I'm using that to shape out the bottom of her eyebrow. So I know a lot of you guys have been complaining about how you can't find this Morphe brush, but my website will be launching in February and I will have a brush very similar to this available on my site in the future. So, you know, just keep that in mind. If you can't find the Morphe brush, hang on tight because I'll be having my very own brush very similar to this one for you all. So all I'm doing is connecting the two brows with concealer just to make sure they're on the same plane basically because it seems like one of her brows are naturally higher than the other which is really normal like it's, it happens to a lot of people sometimes it happens if you get your brows waxed a lot so I'm just making sure that I have them like even out on the bottom and then on the top I'm actually going to thin her brows out she I don't know like her brows can be filled in to be full but for this look I wanted her brows to be a little bit thinner because I knew it's gonna it's gonna be a monochromatic look it's gonna be pink on the eyes pink on the lips since I knew I was gonna be doing a bold lip and a bold eye I just wanted the brow to be a little bit softer a little bit thinner so it may not look right to you guys in the beginning, but in the end, it all comes together really nice. The brows look really nice the way I did them. So just hang on tight, sis. Hang on tight. So I'm going in with my P. Louise base, and this is shade number five. As you can see on her skin tone, it's very bright, but, you know, I make it work. I'm using my BH Cosmetic Brush in V5, and I'm using that to blend that base out. And I'm meeting it with the concealer underneath her eyes. Now I'm going in back to the brows just to make sure that it's all even on the top. I'm just making sure I get that desired shape that I'm looking for. So now I'm going in with the P. Louise uh, Secret Center Palette. All of the colors used will be listed down below. So if you have this palette, 
you can um you know you know what colors i'll use if not you can use juvia's place um zulu palette she has a pink in that palette and a few of, of her other palettes i know she has a like a few pink shades but anyway i'm starting off with this um really vibrant hot pink and i'm using morphe's m441 brush to tap that color onto her crease area and i'm also bringing it up i want to blow this color out because this is the, gonna be the only like there's no like transition shade no crease shade I mean there is but I'm I literally only use two eyeshadows so this pink is gonna come up pretty high she has a good amount of lid space so you know I didn't mind bringing the color up high depends on you know how much lid space the client has I've done this look uh, twice recently on one girl, I didn't bring it up as high. On the other girl, I brought it up a little bit higher. So it just depends on the look you and your client are going for. And, you know, if your client can carry the look. So I'm just tapping that color on and I'm going in circular motions. Because you want to really blur out the edges. And doing the circular motions really help to blow, blow and blur out the edges of the eyeshadow. So now I'm taking another clean Morphe M441 brush and I'm using one of the orange shades in the palette and I'm using that just to blur out the pink a little bit. I, I guess I'm using it as a transition shade. So I'm showing you that I usually use the Anastasia Lipstick Palette to do looks like this. But I wanted to try the new P. Louise base. She has some colors that she came out with and I purchased them so I wanted to try it. It's not as thick and tacky as the original bases. Um, and at this moment, I know I have messed up. <laughs> but I tried to continue on. I tried to go on top with my um, eyeshadow, which is what I would usually do. You know, I've done looks like this plenty of time before. But this just was not hitting for me. I just, I guess that this base, um, this particular base is best for cut creases because it just wasn't, it wasn't doing what I needed it to do. So I tried to make it work, but you guys are going to see what happens. Another thing that I noticed is that the colors kind of became patchy on the lid. The pink that I was putting on her lid, it didn't go over really smooth. It actually became really patchy. So if I'm not using the Anastasia lipstick um, palette, I'm using um, Inglot. I, what is it? The Inglot eyeliner. I think it's number 68. It's like a beige color. I use that as well sometimes, depending on like the color I'm going for. Um, yeah, if I'm doing matte shades, this just was not working for me though. Like I was trying to make it work, but it was not working. So on the other, I'm going on ahead in my lipstick palette. And you can see the difference immediately, like, because it's, like, just, like, a little bit thicker. Like, it just goes on so much smoother and so much better. Like, it just looks really good. I really love this palette. I barely, rarely use this palette for lipstick. Like, I did use it for eye bases. Like, it's really good for the eyes. So, yeah. And this is just a Real Techniques concealer brush that I'm using to apply that uh, lipstick onto the lid. So you can already see the difference. It looks really good. Now I'm going in with that pink eyeshadow and I'm placing that right on top of the lipstick and I'm going to bring that up and blend outwards. You can see a major difference though.
So we're gonna start all over again. So if you mess up on the eyes, please don't wipe the brow off, sis. We don't got time for that. You do not need to wipe that brow off. You just need to add the base and then reapply the concealer, and meet the concealer and meet the base and blend it all together. Okay, so now we're getting that eye back together. I'm gonna go ahead with my Sephora uh, Precision Eyeliner. And I'm gonna do a nice healthy wing. And then I'm gonna blend out all of the harsh edges using that same orange. Now we're moving on to the face. I'm toning her skin with some witch hazel. I'm adding some lashes. For this look, I didn't want the lashes to be super thick and super dramatic. I wanted more like long, flirty lashes just so that you can see that pink and you can see the liner. I didn't want the lashes to take away from the eye look too much. And now I'm just using a, a cream gel eyeliner to... I don't, is it called tight line? I'm just adding black liner to her waterline. Now this is Milk of Magnesia on her skin. I'm using Max Foundation in NC, I'm sorry, in W58. I'm using that in the center of her face. And then on the bottom of her face, I'm taking NARS Zombie on the bottom. So the Milk of Magnesia just really ensures that no oils get through. It, it's really helpful if, you know, you have a client who just needs their makeup to last extremely long. That's really, you know, the main benefit of it. So for the foundation, I'm using my Real Techniques foundation brush and I am tapping that foundation into the skin. I know a lot of my videos, I kind of gloss over my foundation and my skin technique. Um, on my website that's launching in February, I will have online courses and the first series is going to be based on foundation so you guys can learn how to really perfect that skin canvas, that highlight, that contour, you know, no flashback, get that really like porcelain filtered look in person. Yeah, they're going to be all about that for different skin types, different skin finishes. So I'm really excited about that. But I just wanted to show like I take a really long time blending the foundation and you want to make sure that the foundation becomes one with your skin and with your client's skin like you just want to look unreal like you want to look porcelain you want to look perfect and that's not going to happen if you're rushing your blending that's not going to happen if you're dragging the foundation across the face you have to really mesh and blend and tap and pat and just it just has to become one with you, sis, okay? So take your time. Me personally, I like to blend until I feel the foundation is um, becoming a little tacky. It's not as wet on the skin. That's how I know it's ready. So now I'm using a concealer to correct underneath her eye. And then I'm gonna go in with my MAC NC50. And I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna apply it directly on top of that corrector. I'm gonna sharpen up her eyeliner so now is the time if your eyeliner isn't as sharp the time is now to really make sure that it's nice and sharp even if your eyeliner is sharp you still want to go in with that um, concealer to make sure that you don't mess it up while you're blending out that highlight so just a little tip if you feel like your brows are not as sharp at the top now is the time to correct that Now, since she has a 
uh, round face and she has little a very little definition in her cheeks naturally I'm gonna make sure that I curve up uh, this concealer underneath her cheekbone just to bring more emphasis to her cheek area now I'm taking NW50 which is a, a darker more brown shade and I'm using that around her highlight and I'm gonna start to blend everything out. I'm using the foundation brush. This is also the Real Techniques setting brush. And I'm using both tools to blend out. And then Okay, so now I'm going in with my Luscious by Len powder and I'm using the shade Deep Beige. On the website, you can use the code Kiki Adams to get some money off. You guys know I swear by these powders. So I'm using that to set her under eye. I'm pressing that into her skin with a damp sponge. Now I'm going in with the shade Translucent Beige and I'm going to use a little bit of that to bake underneath her eyes. Now I'm going to go in with some Sasha Buttercup and I'm going to use that to bake on her forehead, the beginning of her brows, down the bridge of her nose, her chin, and her cupid's bow. Okay, so off camera I put some zombie um, into her cheek area where you would contour. Not because it's super darker than her, but because I want the powder contour to adhere to something more so it'll show up more on her skin. That's just a little tip if you have a darker client and you don't have a cream contour that's darker than her, you can still use a dark foundation. And then when you go and add your darker powder, it'll adhere to it better so it'll show up more on her skin. So now we're going to start um, pressing that powder into her skin. So now I'm going in with that same black gel liner that I use and I'm using that to smudge underneath her eyes. On top of that, I'm adding that pink eyeshadow that I used on her lid. And this brush I'm using is that Anastasia brush that comes in her palettes. I like to use um, this part of it for like smudging the bottom lash line. It's really nice. And just another quick tip. Um, if you guys are wondering, like my clients, their eyes like don't run in my chair. Like very, like one in a hundred. So what I do if I'm lining their eyes, I tell them to take a deep breath through their nose and hold their breath while I line their eyes very quickly. Sometimes you could do it in one pass, sometimes you could do it in two passes, but that stops um, the eyes from running. So you have to do it quick because you don't want to kill nobody, but it really works. Now I'm using Peach's Pigment, Peach's Makeup Pigment um, in her inner corner. I'll list that down below the shades that I'm using because I don't know off 
the top of my head, but I know it's a pink pigment that I'm using. So now I'm going ahead and adding some contour. I'm using Sasha Cosmetics Matte Brown. And then I'm blurring out the edges of that using Max uh, Studio Fix Powder and NW58. So now for her blush, I'm using a La Femme blush. I believe the name of it is called Bordeaux. It's a dark purpley shimmery shade, which I really love on dark skin tones. I'm not adding too much blush, just a flush of color because it's so much pink on the eyes and the lips are going to be pink. So the hair is red. I don't want the cheeks, you know, to have too much color, but a little flush of color never hurt anybody. So I use a angled brush to apply the glitter underneath the eyes. I uh, take some eyelash glue and I apply it underneath the eyes. I apply a little bit to the brush and then I dip my brush in and apply my glitter. For her lip liner, I'm using this LA Girl concealer to line her lips. I'm using this old MAC lipstick like this. I remember when this um, collection came out. And um, it's a beautiful matte bright pink. I'm focusing that on the center of her lips. She has really full lips. And I don't want the color to be so pungent. I still want it to be soft and pretty. So I'm applying it to the center of the lips. And then I'm blending it outwards into the brown. But I don't want that pink color to meet her natural lip line. I want them to be a natural, I want it to be a natural fade between the brown in her skin and the pink in her lips. So this is a really nice technique that I like to do. And then I'm adding a soft baby pink in the center of her lips just for more definition and texture. And then I'm going to blend it outwards into that darker pink. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of that pink and just blend a little bit more just because we lost it a little bit and I still want it to be visible. Now I'm taking my Art Naturals um, setting spray which I've talked about in the past before but I don't always show this step. Now I'm going in with my Milani highlighter. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you already know me and it's highlighter go way back. This is the best drugstore highlighter you will ever find, okay? Look at that highlight. Mm. Honey, you can't get this nowhere else. Like, this is drugstore, okay? Milani not coming to play. Okay, you guys, this is the completed look. You already know I have cell phone footage. So you guys always ask me about lighting, and I have to say that the makeup should look nice in any lighting, whether you have your ring light and soft lights, whether you're using natural light, a bathroom light it should look nice and with whatever lighting that's number one 
but I don't use any special lighting, you guys. This is my hallway, which my clients call my infamous hallway, but what I do is turn on my hall light, which is a yellow light, and then in my bathroom, I have uh, the same lights that I have in my vanity, so those two lights are shining together. And then this is in my bedroom. I have a white wall in my bedroom and the sun comes directly into my room. And then I just have my light on. But the light in my room is like really, really dim because it's like an energy saver. So this is kind of more so natural lighting, which is the best lighting in my opinion. So yeah, you guys, this is the look. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's different from the things I've been doing on my channel. I hope that you were able to take at least one thing away from this video and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!